What up, guys? ¿Qué pasó, uh, So, this is like my first live that I'm going to do. I'm going to do this on Wednesdays. And the thing about them is going to be more on like super technical things that I've been doing with my productions that might help you out. Uh, also, if you have some questions or like whatnot, just uh, comment and I'll be more than happy to respond later after the live stream is done. So, yeah, let's get to it. Uh, so, the idea of this... Uh, live stream is going to be more on like a little bit of like my chain and what I use to like get those kicks like super like thumping. So, all right, let me show you guys real quick. Okay, so you can get any kick that you want, right, from a loop pack or like whatever, or how you ever want to do your, your like kicks. And you can do this in Ableton, Logic, or like whatever DAW you're going to be using as well. So the cool thing, right, is that I... The only native plugin that I use for uh, tuning my kicks is going to be like the compressor from Logic. But other than that, it's like uh, you can do the same thing with, with all the other ones that I'm going to show you. Fine equivalents as well. So let's get to it. Uh, so the first thing, right, I use this like uh, Omega N by, by Kush, Kush Audio. This plugin is really cool because it's going to emulate a you know, preamp by Neve and is not as, as expensive. So what that's going to cost for your kicks is that they're going to be like bloated a little bit more, kind of like in an analog circuitry. And it, it gives it like more of a rough feel to the kick. So let me show you the kick that we're going to be using. You know, pretty simple kick. Now we're going to add uh, the Omega Model N. So just by turning it on, and off you can feel how like the kick has gotten a little bit chunkier and has a little bit more texture right so over here in intensity we can add a little bit more of that like i don't know robust feel to that kick i mean and we can completely destroy it as well right so usually what i do and what i go for man is just like a little it's like a bit more if i feel like the kick's a little bit weak the one that i'm choosing uh, so the next one that I am going to, uh, uh, so the next one that we're going to be using, right? This one you can find, uh, you, you can find it, um, like, uh, UAD and, uh, I think Plugin Alliance has them too. So this one's, uh, one of my favorite ones that I've, uh, used with, um, uh, you know, like the, with like kicks and, it's a Baxter EQ, right? So the Baxter EQ, let me show you guys real quick what I mean. Cool thing about the Baxter EQ, right? Is that it's going to like change, like it's not like a regular EQ where like you can like actually modify and like bring frequencies down. The Baxter EQ, the functionality is that this bell is actually infinite, right? So you're, you're only going to be pushing like the frequencies but you don't have an, an ability to cut at the end like most of the uh, like EQs do, right? So the cool thing about this one is that it brings the like transients and the frequencies up and it makes it sound a little bit punchier, right? So this is like my first EQ of the chain. So uh, this one, it's by Dangerous Audio, right? So... Let's do this. Backs EQ. And I have it in uh, UAD. And you can go find other equivalents that are for free out there. But I really like this one a lot. So first, the first part that I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut out pretty much. We're going to start like the, like the bell at 18. And then we're going to bring it up. You know, let's see. around 74 and then that bell we're gonna bring it up I, I like you can tell the difference after three how it changes the sound of the low end of the kick so let, let me show you guys how it sounds without it okay now let's turn it on you can you can feel how it's shaping the low end of the kick right so if we continue to bring this up you can 
see how many dBs this is bringing up to, right? So it's pretty unique. Uh, then for the high end, or like the mid high end, right? What, what we're gonna be doing is we're actually going to put the shelf at 2.5 hertz, and then we are going to do this one. Let's see. So I have a cheat sheet over here. Uh, so it's gonna work better, I think. So the shelf then 70. But we really don't wanna push the output a little bit because it's already causing the effect that we want with the bottom end and a little bit more of like on the, the thumpiness of the kick. So that's for sure gonna change the sound of the kick. So after we have this down, right? The other part that I bring in, it's actually the Pro Q from File Filter. And this one, the cool thing is that you can actually like do a lot more with this EQ. But with this one, the one thing that I wanna do is actually just like take out anything that is under 30. And as you can see, like right here around like hundred that's where like like the heaviest part of the kick is so you might want to cue it up a little bit and push up the gain just so it has a little bit more kick to it okay and then that's the second EQ that I use after the backs and then the last part of the chain right we're gonna add a compressor you know any any compressor will do that you have. Most of the compressors have like the same elements, the threshold and everything. So for the threshold, I want to have around like minus 15.5. That's when the compressor is going to be affected after the sound comes through. Then ratio wise, I found it that in between like 4.1 or 6.1 works the best for kicks. Then the makeup, we want it at zero. We don't want any makeup to affect the sound of, of, of the kick. Uh, then over here, auto gain, we want that as an off too, because if not, it gets like super distorted. And then attack wise, right? Attack is kind of like really important for kicks because it, this is like where the meat and potatoes of the kick comes through, right? So we want the attack to be like a 15.5 milliseconds and then you know you have your your release which I usually like doing it kind of like around like 68 you can it can vary for you from time to time but I think I think it works better this way so right there you're starting to feel the thumpiness of the kick right so over here let's turn off the distortion and we don't want any limiter or anything like that happening here, All right? And if we actually bounce this out, you're gonna see how the kick looks more compact and how it sounds like, I don't know, like it looks smaller, but it, it packs more heat, right? So let me bounce it in place so you guys can see it. So, this kick right here, if we push them out, it looks way smaller, more compact. Transients are down, right? Than this one that has been treated. So if we do an A-B comparison, this is gonna be like the, the one that we like came up with, like the first sample that we came up with. Now this is the treated one. They're both like completely different. This like kick has like more punch to it, more thumpiness to it. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much like the, kind of like my idea of, of this type of uh, lives that we're gonna be doing. Uh, Sunday, I'm gonna release a video on my video channel on YouTube. Uh, it's gonna be how you're gonna be able to like work and make the kick dance better with your baseline. So yeah, uh, check that out. It's gonna be out 
like in the afternoon of Sunday. All right, guys, I hope that this was fun. Uh, nos vemos a todos.